arrived outside the gate for the very first first time here, I felt this huge river of energy coming out, and then I exp so I thought, okay, I'm being in, uh, I'm being picked, right? <laughs> it wasn't me coming here, so I was on the back foot from the usual person's point, of, you know, from a city point of view. Um, it was even real for me just to that here there's no boundary fence but walking through there wondering where the boundary was I could actually feel the, the transition between harmony and neighbour because the neighbour has quite a different consciousness so for me the relationship with the place is a lot about the consciousness of the place and I explored that and I thought what can we do together and I wanted to know from it as, and from me and it was to help bring people and nature back together again in a conscious way the main lesson in life being love and rediscovering that with all creatures and all beings so deep ecology came in there and I could relate to that a little bit because they talked of that sort of thing and they still do um, and there's this newer division called spiritual ecology which talks a lot like this too so we took the traditional year or so I made tracks initially because I thought it'll get me to know the place without changing the place except me being here is changing it anyway and I came in contact with the animals in making the tracks. I lost the, I couldn't find the boundary again because there's no boundary fence way up uh, in the far corner. And I was making a track though around about where I thought it was. And then this highway opened up. It was only about this high, but it was clear right through. And I realised it was probably wild pigs that had made this highway for me at one stage. It was about 20 paces and paralleling the boundary. And I came around and integrated that into my track, came around to the edge, and I couldn't find it. And then I looked down even lower, now about this high, just pig height, there was a clear way, so I rummaged around, like Peter just said, get down on the ground. And right there, I found the end of the fence through th very thick bush. It was like the pig had marked it out. And I've had interesting relationships with the pigs, which aren't always um, what I want, or with the other animals, they're not always what I want. So, relationship led to okay, differences of opinion as to what roles we play as living things in this system. And the plants I found were very forgiving. They're very. E they hold to me. They hold light, life a lot lighter than an animal. You can take their life a lot easier, but um, it takes a lot of respect. And respect was something that was moulding the way I was behaving out out here. And then on. Then they said, um, "Get your access right, because." Um, that'll make everything else easier. So I started to make paths and later drives and things up from the road and look at how is that going to um, become like a living system that spreads out into the bush. And where's the vehicle going to go easily but where are the people going to want to go? How are they going to relate? Before the road was built I learned I got introduced to rocks, so a volunteer came and we placed some rocks. Probably haven't seen them, they're so naturalised. But <laughs> they are steps, massive rocks, and two days, I think it was, later, another friend came and says, I hadn't noticed those rocks before, they, they must have been there all the time. <laughs> um, and so I started connecting with rocks and using the rocks everywhere that I could, because they're thermal mass but they're also ma electromagnetic energy that they often hold as well as the minerals so they and then the gardens came into place tentatively we laid a few rocks around we'd have woofers out here and I would say just do whatever you like 
and they would then listen and I'd get their response and watch what they did and they'd put a few rocks around and a garden would form and might change a bit later but it started to, they started to place themselves in amongst the, the paths and we explored with fences because there were a lot of possums at the time um, doing things to the um, gardens and but we got fed up with fences and we took them down and then the animals um, celebrated and we knew we would had done the right thing because even the birds don't like the fences um, an example of that years later was the, the kiriru I saw one day standing over in the middle of the clearing it came flying in over the canopy and it did a half circle gaining altitude and it spiralled and then at full speed it flew down the track over there that most of you flew down so it's, it's, it's highway as well and of course it didn't have to worry about any fences anywhere um, to get in its way mm. so it um, evolved the part the driveway crept up more and then that meant a lot of soil to process because I was grubbing it off as I went and so some boards went up in the gardens and they started to define themselves more then to hold the earth so the drive could come closer and as the, all those came together then you could see where the buildings were going um, where they naturally fitted because you have to have a path to a building before you have the building and for me um, you have to have a way of getting there and it has to fit in the environment and I had fun with the sheds um, like I didn't, we didn't want to kill anything uh, not even a tree. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that's my first building that's actually killed a tree. But anyway, <laughs> the initially, I and I've built this garden shed. I've got it custom made. It's within millimetres of the size of the clearing. It was rubbing a tree at the back and it was against a root on the side. And it, so it made the buildings fit the clearings so that we could take use of the spaces, the little niches on the sides of the clearing in order to have more space for the gardens.